Today in the news, we got some Zen 2, some Athlon Unleashed, and a new Titan. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. It seems like AMD is on track to deliver us the sweet, sweet Zen 2 architecture on the third generation of Ryzen. Gigabyte had a private event and one of the presentation slides was leaked, revealing that Ryzen's third gen could launch around Computex next year. On the slide, we can see that the X570 platform will be announced at Computex in June and so far, Zen's cycle has been around a year and a month every time, so it's safe to assume that Zen 2 might come around the same time. The X570 chipset is also expected to be the first motherboard to support PCIe Gen 4. PCIe Gen 4 would bring double the bitrate and a ton of latency improvements, but I don't think it would be the smartest idea to jump on this version of the board just yet. Now I'm saying this because X570 is likely the last iteration of AM4 boards since AMD confirmed that it would support the socket up through 2020. Since we had Zen Plus for the original Zen and we have Zen 2 coming up, Zen 3 is likely the last chip on this socket. Now I'm just making an observation here. I mean, AMD has been amazing in terms of support for their socket so far, and adding PCIe 4.0 is good for whoever wants to stick to AM4 past 2020. Now to touch on this compatibility point, I do have to give a huge kudos to AMD for this. I mean, it's pretty insane that Intel blocks newer CPUs on older but similarly pinned sockets. We already have someone who managed to overclock an i9-9900K on a Z170 board and all he had to do was some BIOS tweaks and a software patch. Just push a BIOS update and you might have people with older boards take advantage and buy some of you new CPUs, Intel. The excuses of power requirements are ridiculous now that we know that this 9900K was OC to 5.5 gigahertz. Anyways, what do you guys think about this? Let me know down below. Speaking of overclocks, it seems like AMD's newest Athlon processor accidentally got unlocked by MSI motherboards. The AMD Athlon 200GE was supposed to be locked at 3.2 GHz, but YouTuber Tech Epiphany posted a video showing his chip overclocked to 3.8 GHz. This isn't a one-off though, since Tom's Hardware did their own testing shortly after and pushed their chip to 3.9 GHz. Right now, it seems like the overclock only works on MSI motherboards, but I guess we would have to wait for more testing to see if this thing would work on other vendors. AMD did respond to this saying that AMD has not unlocked and does not officially support overclocking of the Athlon 200G. It would be best to inquire with MSI regarding BIOS functionality on the company's motherboard products. This little chip performs pretty well when overclocked, trading blows with the Core i3-7100 in certain tasks. This is incredible value considering the 200G is a third of the price of Intel's i3. If I can get my hands on one of those and an MSI board, that would be a great HTPC chip once overclocked. Personally, I really like when motherboard vendors do that. I don't know if this was just an MSI mess up, but the fact that we can overclock such a cheap CPU gives more options to a lot of people. It's kind of like what happened with the Intel 8400 or what is happening right now when all core overclocks are applied by the motherboard automatically when you have a case queue. Anyways, moving on, we have the newly announced Titan RTX to talk about. NVIDIA wants us to call it the T-Rex, so I guess that's what I'll call it from now on. For once, NVIDIA brings extreme value to the Titan line of GPU. <laughs> No, but seriously, it seems like uh, the premium on these cards is getting ridiculous. Sure, it's $500 cheaper than the Titan V, but the specs are pretty laughable for two times the price of the 2080 Ti. Let's take a look. Memory-wise, we go from 11 gigabytes to 24. That is a substantial jump, but it's also the only substantial one. Looking at the core counts, we see a completely different picture. Ray tracing cores go from 68 for the Ti to 72 for the T-Rex. Tensor cores from 544 to 570. 76, CUDA cores from 452 to 4608, and they both have the same amount of graphics processing and texture processing clusters. All of this for an extra gig array of performance going from 10 to 11. Honestly, I get that this card might be worth more than a 2080 Ti, but to go from 1200 to $2,500 is insane. I mean, I would go as far as to say that $1,800 would be barely reasonable, but wow, 2,500 bucks. Anyways, I don't have one and benchmarks on it aren't out yet, so I guess we'll see if it's worth it in the next few weeks. 
Lastly, in gaming, do you remember getting over it with Bennett Foddy? Uh, the game that got every streamer yell in frustration. Well, an easter egg in Just Cause 4 makes Rico trade in his grappling hook for a cauldron with a pickaxe. It looks just as frustrating as the original, if not more. At least, if you exit the cauldron, you can speedrun the whole thing with your grappling hook. Anyways, you have the comment section down below, so let's talk. Would you grab an Athlon 200 GE now that you know it might be overclockable if you have an MSI board? Are you planning on upgrading to X570? What do you think about this Titan T-Rex thing? I'll be down below reading and responding. You can click or tap right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. As usual, stay frosty, and I'll see you on the next one. By the way, I know that the lighting changed during the video. It's because my primary light is on. The other one, I forgot to charge and it died mid-video. Anyways, take care.